Good afternoon. This is the Cal Guy clothes. Uh, I am wearing my tie. I got my pin on, but I am not the cow guy. I'm Dan Geltrude, also known as America's accountant. I'm filling in for Scott, who will be back tomorrow. One question people always ask me is whether the stock market is going to go up or down. My answer is always the same, and it's one word. Yes, it's going to go up and it's going to go down. So it's about timing. So, so let me be clear. I can't time the market no one can. Success in the market comes down to strategy and playing the long game. I don't provide advice about specific investments. What I do tell people is that investment diversity based upon achieving reasonable outcomes is a wise strategy. Now, let me, let me use a baseball analogy here. Focus on singles and doubles. Bunt when you need to. Hit the sacrifice fly too. You'll occasionally get that triple as well as the home run. But when you swing for the fences every time, you'll end up striking out a lot. So bat for a good average. In baseball, success three out of ten times will get you into the Hall of Fame. In the stock market, you could do much better than that with the right strategy. Our first guest is in my Hall of Fame. Please welcome Keith Fitzgerald, principal of Fitzgerald Group. Keith, I want to hear your strategies on where we go from here. A lot of craziness going on in the market. What say you, my friend? Well, I tell you what, you raise a very important point, one that we talk about constantly with our folks. You've got to play the long game if you want to win the long game. Pessimists make money at moments in time, but optimists, people who are playing the long game, make money consistently at long periods over time. Markets like this come and go, Dan. They go up and down. That's entirely normal. People forget that success, by its very definition, includes failure. So the fact that they're selling and buying is exactly what you want to see. It doesn't feel good. It's scary. The headlines are making you go crazy. They make my head explode, frankly. But if you stick to the very best names, the very best companies making products and services the world cannot live without, guess what? That's where your RBIs are going to come from, particularly if they pay dividends. Those stocks fall less, stabilize first, and recover fastest, which is why I don't fear big down days. So when, we're, when, when you're looking at this, Keith, I mean, short term, long term. So do you have some specific plays that you say, all right, this is short term versus this is long term? Or do you just say everything is long term? How do you play that? And what do you tell investors specifically about that? Well, you know, you want to be able to be nimble and you want to take those opportunities when you can see it. If you've got that Sunday pitch and you can hit out of the park, then take the dang thing. For example, Tesla in early 2012, people looked at Elon Musk like he was a raving lunatic. I saw something brilliant. The stock's up 8,000% and something like that in the last decade. So you do get those things. There's eight to 10 Teslas out there right now. People think the end of the financial universe is upon us, but look at yourself. Is Apple really going to go out of business? I think the answer is no. If Tesla is really going to go out of business, no. But both of those companies are being priced that way right now. The stock market is really weird, Dan. It's the only place in the world where you can have a 50% off sale and people run the other direction. <laughs> well, that, you know what? That is really a uh, – I'm going to steal that, by the way, if you don't mind, Keith. But you're exactly right. So people who were loving Apple – 12 months ago, where's the love now or 18 months ago? If that stock is down and you loved it then, what, what's going on now? So I really think that's that's tremendous advice. But that goes to the long game, right? Because if you well, like Apple, then you stick with Apple. But that leads me to this. What about big tech in general? Uh, how do you how do you see that, Keith? Well, people are making a tremendous mistake right now. They're saying, oh, big tech is terrible. Big tech is going to go out of existence. No, it's not. You've got to understand that not all big tech is the same. For example, Apple, people are changing the way they buy. They're changing their medicine. Inflation rages. They're worried about recession. I haven't met one person yet that's giving up their iPhone because of inflation. In fact, people are buying it more because it helps them do more in their lives. On the other hand, you've got something like Peloton. 
iPads on a bike are not a business, no matter what anybody says. It's no wonder this stock has failed. So I would submit if you've got a short-term opportunity to buy Apple on sale and take money that otherwise would have left you holding the bag at Peloton, maybe that's a good trade. So there is very much short-term opportunity, even if you have a long-term perspective. I mean, speaking of Peloton, what I think about is, is the trajectory of that company during the pandemic, right? Because people couldn't get out to the gym. Not that I was getting out to the gym before that. That's another story. But everybody could work out at home. Now, once, the, once everything opens back up, where's Peloton now? Are there other companies that you see that are going to have those similar types of problems? Oh yeah, the the market. Here's the thing, you know, people again, they just they just get this short-term angst, and their emotions run wild, which is why they can't play the long game. They lack the long-term perspective to overcome the short-term chaos. So if you look at a stock like Carvana, for example, or even a household name like Meta, I submit that's a fifty-dollar stock because Zuckerberg is having his, you know, what handed to him by Cook, who is now in the driver's seat, and the fact that Musk is out with his new AI and his chatbots, that's got to be terrifying to Zuckerberg. So, you know, that's an example of a household name that I think is destined for some seriously rough times. What do you what do you make of uh, of these layoffs and big numbers, big numbers? What do you think well, of that? Two things. Number one, I think Powell is as wrong about labor as he was about transitory. So the fact that there are layoffs does not disturb the case for, for example, high tech. They used to have three job op three job applicants for every opening. Now they've got two. Hiring continues. The composition is simply changing. We're becoming a nation of service and hospitality providers as opposed to high tech brain power. Now that, good or bad, is just simply what's happening. So I look at that market. I say, you know what? Layoffs are a sign of prudent management. The companies that are doing that, cutting hard, cutting fast, I'm going to take a hard look because if they got good numbers in a business case, guess what? I still want in. But if they're just laying people off for the heck of it or the management has no idea what they're doing and you're getting the dog ate my homework on the earnings call, I'm not interested. Well, I think that's an excellent analysis, Keith, and we appreciate that insight. So thank you so much. Thanks, Dan. I want to take a minute.